Uh, let's start with Real Sociedad against uh, Manchester United. Uh, Jules, proper game this. Fantastic game, the top of uh, the, league, the team leading La Liga at the moment against Manchester United is Adnan Yanuzai, for example, going back to Old Trafford. is David Silva, more importantly, going back to Old Trafford where he usually plays so well or used to play so well with Manchester City. Remember the famous 6-1 uh, win there by, uh, by the citizens. So there's a lot of narratives there. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who I think you know, will, will, will have the Europa League as a priority, like last season, trying to finally win a trophy as the Manchester United manager. For Real Sociedad, they're playing really well. They only lost one game this season. Not the most experienced, apart from the likes of David Silva and Nacho Montreal, not the most experienced side in Europe. However, they've got loads of great youngsters from the academy. They've got great spirit in that team, quite good depth of squad as well. So I think they can cause trouble to United. It's a nightmare draw for United, isn't it, Ian? Yeah, it's about as tough a draw as they probably could have got, the way that uh, Real Sociedad are playing in Spain. And that David Silva angle, of course, is the one which will uh, excite all the writers uh, ahead of the tie. But you'd think, and I think Jose Mourinho, the Tottenham manager, was being a little bit mischievous, but he said that once Manchester United had dropped in this competition, they are the favourites to win it. So that was, that was part of the old mind games from Jose. But I think he's probably right. They are, though... It's very hard to know what you're going to get next from Manchester United, even within games this season. And some of these opponent, opponents, you could get away with that inconsistency. Not Real Sociedad, Don. How much does Solskjaer need a good run or indeed to go on and win this competition just for something to hang his hat on? He needs a, he needs a massive run. He needs to go really deep into the competition. And as you said, it's the worst possible draw because Sociedad could easily do United over two legs quite, quite easily because you're not sure, you're not ever sure which... Man United side's going to turn up. They've been too inconsistent. They leak goals, especially away from home. And they, all right, they've got the character to try and recover. But in the Champions League, they had some ridiculous losses. Um, and their confidence, you know, in the competition and, and now into Europa League will, will dent their confidence big time. They're still trying in the league, but they're still inconsistent. So it depends on, on what momentum they can get from now until Europa League games. Uh, meanwhile, Arsenal, who we've well, spoke about a lot already on this show, taking on Benfica. Uh, again, a draw that Arteta wouldn't have wanted, Jules. One of the worst draws possible. As we said, Real Sociedad and Benfica were probably the, the two sides that finished second in their group to avoid. And yet, Arsenal got one of them. Benfica second in, in, uh, in La Liga, in the, the Premier Liga in, in Portugal, just two points behind Sporting, doing well, although they finished second in their group behind Rangers. But Darwin Nunez has been fantastic since joining the club. They've had some new players in the summer. Jorge Jesus has come back as well. And tactically, you know how good he can be. So it's, that's a hell of a... I know a lot of things can happen between now and the end of February for Arsenal, but this is a hell of a tie for them. Yeah, it's a terrible draw, Ian. Uh, it's a great draw, I think. I mean, they're oh. two great names, whatever Arsenal's problems, and there are many of them at the moment. And Benfica are one of the great names, aren't they, of European football. You can go all the way back to Eusebio, going back to the days when they were winning the European Cup in its early years. I mean, they've never been quite the same kind of power as that in the decades since then. But um, I think it's a lovely draw and it's an appetising tie. But Arsenal will need to improve a good deal, I think, if they're going to uh, overcome that hurdle. This could be the one lifeline, though, couldn't it? You deliver the Europa League. It should be, could be, would be enough for Arteta, Don? Well, it would be, but I can't see it. I can't see him delivering the Europa League. I really can't. Uh, and it's not just him. It's, it's the team that he's got. It's the individuals that he's, he's got. It's the lack of characters that he's got in the team. And there's so many problems within the football club. You know, Meza Ozil will always be a story when Arsenal lose games, as will Gwendouzi. Uh, Granit Xhaka's is just the same old problem. Um, lazy defending from him um, and it's it seems apparent that the team at the moment is playing with zero confidence so a lot of work to be done on the training ground I think for Mikel Arteta well thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube for more sports highlights and analysis be sure to download the ESPN app and for live streaming premium content and let's not forget as well ESPN FC seven days a week subscribe to ESPN plus